Netflix must have put a lot of money into Blood Origin thinking it would be successful. You wouldn't be able to tell from the content in the show because they picked awful writers and the CGI was abysmal, but they were hoping Witcher would be their own Game of Thrones or Rings of Power just a couple of years ago. But now, not even two weeks after its release, it's already fallen off of Netflix's top charts, spelling disaster for them yet again. I have a bunch of different things to show off, but before we get into the topic at hand, if you enjoy the content that I create, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media like Twitter or mine so that you can see when my content is posted. And of course, if you do really enjoy the videos and the live streams that I create, please consider becoming a Dark Titan via Patreon for just a dollar a month or or support the channel via YouTube memberships. All of the links are in the description, and of course, I do really appreciate all of the support. So starting with this article, it says top 10 Netflix shows and movies, what's new and trending today on January 4th. Now, it does talk about the newest Netflix you know, shows and movies that have released and the best Netflix shows and movies, but unfortunately for them, Blood Origin is not there. So coming in at number one is Netflix's newest heist thriller, Kaleidoscope, and then you have Wednesday, Emily in Paris, The Recruit, Ginny in Georgia, New Amsterdam, Glory, Treason, Lady Voyeur, Alice in Borderlands, and then you get into the movies. This article actually points out that it slipped off the top list. It says uh, the number one show is still Kaleidoscope, the number one movie is still Glass Onion, and The Witcher slipped from the list less than two weeks after its release, a disappointing result for the spin-off prequel that Netflix had high hopes for. And we do know overall they've put a lot of money into The Witcher on their service, but unfortunately they are not putting the money into the right areas and this show just ended up being a disaster. I didn't think that it was going to hold on the top list because not only are Henry Cavill fans boycotting it and not watching it, but real Witcher fans are furious over the show because of the changes that it makes, the uh, you know, source material it doesn't follow in the overall poor quality of this series that Netflix thought was acceptable when it's not. Of course, I have talked about how it does now have the worst audience scores of all time for Netflix on things like Rotten Tomatoes. It was all the way down to a 9%. It is, it is up to a 12%, but that's still really awful for them. And taking a look at the critic scores, even critics dislike this show. It's at a 33% all but a 25% top critic score. And I have seen a lot of articles release over the past couple of days from critics who have said, yeah, you know what? It's really just that bad. I can't believe that Netflix would make it. This is a Telegraph um, article, The Witcher Blood Origin Review, Cheap Fantasy Nonsense That Embarrasses Its Stars. It also embarrasses the source material. We have uh, gotten so many good novels in video games surrounding The Witcher, but unfortunately, Netflix just hasn't been able to nail it. I've said it many times, but the base Mothership show did have moments that were really good. Season 1 and 2 had moments that felt like The Witcher, the casting felt perfect, but unfortunately, the overall products that we got were still not close to perfect. They did still stray away from source material quite a bit. They cut out a lot of very memorable, important scenes, uh, and overall, the CGI wasn't, you know, perfect. It they still had problems, which was unfortunate, but they were miles better than what Origin is. I mean, this show is just one of the worst pieces of content you could imagine being made. And of course, when you ask fans of this franchise what they thought about this show, they say they absolutely hate it. Circling back to the Rotten Tomatoes scores, I figured that we could read a couple of the audience. Uh, one stars, half stars everywhere, very few four stars, and absolutely no five stars in sight. 
Uh, people saying things like, what is this? The actors are all great, but in this, they're all terrible. The storyline makes no sense and just jumps around and has no relation to The Witcher in any way. CBR's own reviewer said the show stinks. Nothing else needs to be said. This is what happens when you focus on making something different than sticking to the source material. They tried to, yes, take the general Witcher story but they decided to put all of these different spins and twists on it, change the characters, uh, create crazy characters. And unfortunately for Netflix, their writers and creatives are not talented enough. And now they ended up with this pile of garbage that, again, is one of their worst rated pieces of content they have ever released. And I did talk about it in a previous video, but one of the co-showrunners was even publicly begging for a renewal, saying, I'd love love to work on a season two. There's so much more story to tell. There is absolutely no way that they are getting a second season of this. First of all, it was supposed to be a limited series, but sometimes if things are very successful, you know, companies will change their mind. Um, but there was nothing with this that screamed, wow, this was a success. We should renew it. It fell off of the top charts. It's got awful user and critic scores, and there's just no positivity surrounding this project at this point. Uh, a one star shows a lack of respect for the original stories behind this brand and the fan base behind it to rush out something like this. The script feels like it was bashed out over a weekend. I struggled through all four episodes and I was routinely disappointed. And it's so funny because this was actually supposed to be six episodes. And as far as we know, they edited it into six episodes, but they decided to cut two. We didn't know then why they decided to do that, but now we know that it's just that bad. I wish that I could sit here and say that I'm surprised that this show was so bad, but I'm not. They have been making so many bad decisions when it comes to this franchise, it's mind-blowing, and I don't see any way that they can fix The Witcher shows at this point. A rumor was circulating that they wanted a total reboot because of Henry Cavill's exit, which at this point may be the only way to go story-wise, but at the same time, we've gotten multiple seasons of this show, and erasing them isn't going to erase the memories we had of it, so I don't really know what they're thinking. Just because you reboot something doesn't mean it will be as successful as the original content, but yes, as you can see, it has fallen off of the top 10 chart in less than two weeks, but honestly, I don't think that any of us are actually surprised at that. But that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed it and found it important and informative, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.